Welcome to day 16 of our January challenge 2021 and our third day of working on Christine Warmhold's piece called Solace. Um, this is the third day of five. We're only doing a short run on this particular piece. Um, it sounds longer than that, Mary, but hey, um, there's a repeats and there's some da capos. Da capos means we're going back to the beginning. We'll talk about that when it comes up. So we're actually almost, well, by the end of today, you'll be past the halfway point. So day three, we're just going to do a shorter section now because there's a bit more going on, but there's a pattern. So once you've got the pattern into your fingers, under your skin, as it were, then um, you can keep it moving and you can flow through it quite well. So what we have is we have some a triad shape in our left hand heading upwards, which is this D, F, A. Okay, this is D above middle C. Playing that, I've got my three, two, one on. I play three and two. And then I'm replacing my third before playing the thumb. And then I'm buffing on. Buff is what I call my block placing. I'm going buff with fingers two and one. And I play upwards again. Three, two, place the D, place the two, F and A. Place the D, place F and A. Place the D, place F and A. So it's a cycle. go around that without even looking at your strings but doing that placing okay um, it's about that directional of place directional placing so that we don't confuse our brain um, the more we stick to this rule the better it works for us so this rule is the idea that you only ever place in one direction at any one time so I have the three fingers on to start with because my notes are heading upwards I play the D I play the F. Now, if I were to put D and F on right now, my brain would think I'm going to go back down because it's different direction and the F is between the A and the D. So that's why I only place the D. And then I can put my F and A on because now I'm going to head back up again. Going down, back up. Going down, back up. Okay? So we want to have that really steady pattern and be able to do that without looking even once you've got on and really conscious of that placing so that it becomes second nature so you don't have to be conscious of it. Okay, so that's the left hand and actually after two bars of doing that, the lower two notes move down one, thumb stays on the A. Same idea, we place finger three, then we add on two and one. Place finger three, add on two and one as a buff. Then finger three, buff, finger three and then buff. Okay, so we've got two bars of that in the left hand. The right hand, however, is doing a contrary motion, an opposite direction. It's also got a D triad on to start with. In fact, it's got the same fingers on the same strings, an octave higher than the left hand does. But it's playing downwards and twice the speed or twice as many notes in the same space of time. So we're going one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And it's the same idea. We're heading downwards so we can place all three, one, two and three. We play one and two. Then we put our thumb back on because now we're heading upwards and then we buff on which i just let them fall out onto there one placed two and three on so there's always something on and that buffing on really works well if you've got lovely low fingers that have just bent into the hand as you played gone into there rather than curling up here if you have them really level and play it like this gets really sort of scrunchy, quite claw-like, quite messy. If you've got a lovely high thumb, low fingers, maybe bring everything down on the strings a bit so that they're vaguely near the middle. If you have your fingers near the middle, your thumb will be too high. If you have your thumb near the middle, your fingers will be too low. So have them roughly equal distance from the middle. It'll just be a really beautiful action, bending in like this, okay? So that's happening downwards and it's happening twice as often as the left so it's about what's going to land with what okay so the first notes land together then we're on to our next notes that are going to land together whilst we've placed our thumb in the top left hand can place finger three right hand places its other notes plays its thumb and then finger two, okay? 
they all kind of take a turn at landing together. So at the beginning, it's finger one in the top hand, finger three in the left. In the middle, it's finger three in the top hand, finger two in the left. And at the end of it, it's finger two in the top hand and thumb in the left. Okay, now you can get very sort of mechanical thinking about it, very mathematical thinking about it, and this lies with that and that lies with that. And that can work for some people, but it can also really get you tangled in the knots because you're putting a lot of processing thought in. A better way, if possible, and it, it involves releasing yourself, freeing yourself up, is to kind of get this pattern in the left nice and steady, and then just add that top in. And it is still mathematical, it's still twice as many top notes as the left hand. But I'm not thinking too hard about which finger's landing where. I'm just allowing them to happen. It's very, very good for the brain because this side's controlling that hand, this side's controlling that hand, and they're going, they're sort of crossing over. They're so similar and yet they're not at the same time. So it's really brilliant for the brain. So if you're finding it hard, then congratulate yourself on how hard you're working your brain and think about all those new bridges and routes through in your brain that you're helping to build. Okay, so you want to really work on that and you might just play that pattern around for ages before you eventually lower the bottom two notes and have those going around. But I definitely think the idea of setting your left hand going really steady and then adding your top hand in when you're ready. And the idea of doing that is so that your left hand can get onto your automatic pilot a bit. And then your top hand can just come in and you can focus on that with where that's going. Okay. Um, that's it for today because that's quite a lot to think about. Um, I guess what I want to ask you to do is not think too hard and just do and just be, okay? The other thing you could do, and maybe I'll do this in the play along video, I'll play one hand for you and you can try adding the other hand above it just so that you can be not having to think about everything at once but let you land them together. So yeah, we'll do that in the play along video. Okay, I will see you over on the play along. And then I'll see you tomorrow where we continue this pattern to finish this phrase. Okay, well done.